Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 91 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Okay, uh, I'm going to dispense with any promotions for any comic books today, um, in, including my own, because uh, this video is going to be rather long, and I really want to look at something uh, non-comic book related today, and that is the question whether or not we will see a bunch of woke advertisements during the Super Bowl this Sunday. Now, I'm sure you recall the uh, Gillette Toxic Masculinity ad from uh, last year that was released a few weeks before the uh, Super Bowl. Let me play just a bit of that here. We can't hide from it. Now, I played that particular clip of the, of the ad because it will tie into the main point that I will get to in a bit. As you may remember, uh, Gillette ended up not running the ad during the Super Bowl, not because of any blowback, not because there were threats of a boycott from you know, actual men, but because the company thought running the ad was too expensive. <laughs> now, after the backlash Gillette received from the not Super Bowl ad, you'd think they'd learned their lesson. Nope. Later in the year, they followed it up with this. Growing up, I was always trying to figure out what kind of man I wanted to become, and I'm still trying to figure out what kind of man that I want to become. Happy. I'm glad I, I'm at the point where I'm able to shave. South, south, north, north, east, west. That advertisement features Samson Brown, a woman trans transitioning to a man, uh, hence a transgender man, and his first shave. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did Gillette jump into the fire again? But you really should be asking, um, you know, why did Gillette ever do any of these ads in the first place? Why did they even do the non-Super Bowl advertisement? when there were plenty of examples of what the response is to, to such ads. Uh, for example, you may recall that Dove Soap, which is made by the Unilever Corporation, about three years ago ran an ad featuring a transgender woman and her experiences as a mom. Um, it was, and as I recall, it was called Real Mom, and it resulted in a big backlash from actual female moms, and uh, that came along with threats to boycott. Um, then there was the woke Pepsi ad, I'm sure you all remember this, starring Kendall Jenner, that dropped the W from woke and replaced it with a J. Um, and here is what I'm pretty sure is the key part of that advertisement. Now, why is that key? Again, we'll get to that in a bit. But as you recall, the ad was mocked mercilessly. Yet, despite those examples, Gillette went woke not once, but twice last year. And then there was the Coca-Cola company, which, you know, despite not, you know, not only having the examples of uh, both Dove and Pepsi, but also the example of the Gillette disasters to learn from, released this Sprite ad in November of last year. When you are through a storm hold your head up high and don't and you never walk alone and of course, Coca-Cola was also mocked and ridiculed mercilessly for this. So, you know, why? Why do companies keep running these ads, you know? Why don't they learn? Why? Well, the fact is they have learned. They've learned to uh, curry favor with these guys. Now, on the off chance you don't know, that is the logo for the Human Rights Campaign. Um, one of the more radical LGBTQ LMNOP groups out there, and as far as I know, actually the largest uh, such group out there. The Human Rights Campaign has something called the 
Corporate Equality Index, where they rate companies on their commitment to uh, LGBTQ issues. Now, corporations can get a total score of 100 on the index, and that's the best score on, on this index. And here is the methodology. We are concerned with criteria three, and let's go to the next page to part C um, uh, of criteria three, uh, which is, quote, three distinct efforts of outreach or engagement to the broader LGBTQ LMNOP community. And then uh, let's look at the third bullet point here, uh, which is, again, quote, marketing or advertising to LGBTQ consumers. And that includes advertising with LGBTQ content, advertising in LGBTQ media, or sponsoring LGBTQ organizations and events, end quote. And the uh, uh, emphasis here, of course, is the phrase advertising with LGBTQ content. Now, um, Part C there constitutes 15% um, of the entire ranking. So if you are a corporation concerned about it, you are going to put out advertisements that are woke and contain LGBTQ stuff to uh, help you satisfy this part of the corporate equality index. You know, that's why I played the particular clips that I did from the Gillette Toxic Masculinity ad and the Pepsi ad. Those were the parts of that, that those companies could say appealed to the LGBTQ LMNOP community, um, at least as far as the corporate equality index is concerned. The other ads I mentioned, well, you know, they are obviously an attempt by those companies to uh, get on bended knee to the human rights campaign. But, you may be objecting, corporations aren't that concerned about this index, are they? Indeed, the human rights campaign can't have uh, that kind of influence, especially when, like most groups on the political left, they are such a poorly funded organization with uh, limited resources, right? <laughs> Yeah, you probably smelled that pile of BS a mile away. Um, here is the building that Human Rights Campaign owns in Washington, D.C. It is in the northwest quadrant on the corner of Rhode Island Avenue and 17th Street. And believe me, that is primo real estate in D.C. Um, you go uh, basically one block over to 16th Street and you walk about six or seven blocks south and you will actually run into the White House. The collusion delusion is over. That building is valued at about five million, according to the Human Rights Campaign's uh, recent tax return. And speaking of tax returns, here is the latest tax return of uh, the Human Rights Campaign, the 990 form that nonprofits have to file. And just as a quick aside here, if you ever want to see the 990 of a nonprofit, you can go to guidestar.org, uh, set up a free account, and see the last three tax returns of just about any nonprofit. Anyways, um, from April 2018 to March 2019, the Human Rights Campaign took in just under $49 million in revenue. They spent just over $49 million that year, so they had a deficit. But they have about $13 million in assets, so it's really no problem for those guys in covering their debts. Um, so they have considerable resources they can bring to bear to make the life miserable for a corporation that gets out of line. Uh, such as, say, calling for a boycott. Now, I don't know how many gays and lesbians follow the dictates of the human rights campaign, but if you are a corporation and you have a lot of gay and lesbian customers, you know, why bother taking the chance of pissing them off, okay? Next, and you know, you certainly don't want a lot of these folks showing up and protesting your business or your uh, shareholder meeting. Um, you know, that can actually slow down bi your business and lead to some very bad uh, PR. And speaking of bad PR, you know, how do you think the media will portray it if the human rights campaign downgrades your, uh, your rating on the corporate equality index? You know, do you think that the media will note how radical human rights campaign is? <laughs> Or do you think that they will portray said business as anti-gay, anti-lesbian, and so on? 
Well, we don't actually have to speculate on that. The Hallmark Channel late last year pulled a commercial from its network that showed two lesbians getting married. Um, The backlash from human rights campaign was swift and furious. They dropped Hallmark from the corporate equality index. Uh, The resulting media coverage was not good for Hallmark, and they eventually reinstated the ad. And about a month later, their CEO, Bill Abbott, stepped down. So the human rights campaign has convinced a lot of big companies that they need to maintain a high rating on the corporate equality index. And a lot of businesses, a lot of corporations, uh, when they achieve 100 on the index, they tout it. For example, here's a press release from Northwestern Mutual boasting about perfect scores on the index for six years in a row. And here is the Human Rights Campaign's blog with a pretty substantial list of big companies getting on, going on Twitter and celebrating their perfect scores on the Corporate Equality Index. So uh, let's take a look at who, uh, who we've got here. Um, okay, the Cosmopolitan. Well, that's, that's not a surprise. Um, oh, Thomson Reuters. Isn't Reuters like a media company? Yes, they are. And aren't they supposed to be, uh, you know, unbiased, objective uh, uh, journalists? Uh, well, here they are, eighth consecutive re- year. We're proud to have earned 100% on the Corporate Equality Index. Gee, do you think they're able to report on human rights campaign objectively? Yeah. Um, Lonestein Sandler. Uh, Digitus, yeah, Merck, um, NVIDIA, uh, Farmers Insurance, all right, uh, Guardian Life, let's see, Assurant, big insurance company, uh, who else here, um, Cigna, another big, big insurance company, uh, who else, Airbnb, all right, Chicago Fed, I mean, there's just, there's loads of them here. I'll provide, Hasbro, Hasbro, okay. (laughs) God, well, anyways, I'll provide a link to this uh, blog post in the description below. You can take a look at it yourself if you're interested. And the uh, four companies whose commercials we've been looking at, how did they do on the index? Oh, believe me, their knees are fully bent. So um, here are three final thoughts. First, um, the Corporate Equality Index, especially Part C of, the, uh, of Criterion Number 3, is brilliant in this sense. Um, it encourages, almost compels, corporations to push LGBTQ LMNOP propaganda. Um, for starters, um, you know, when this happens, the human rights campaign doesn't have to put, uh, as many resources into its own propaganda, which frees up, you know, some resources for other purposes. Next, um, you know, when corporations do it, uh, it can make that propaganda, you know, seem more legitimate. That is, if the human rights campaign was running these kinds of commercials, well, you know, a lot of viewers will dismiss it as part of this, uh, you know, part of a political group's agenda. But if a big corporation pushes it, well, maybe you should take it more seriously. Now, that hasn't happened yet, but a steady drumbeat of this stuff geared toward younger generations that may be a bit more gullible, hey, soon these ideas become mainstream. All right, the second thought, how about a very woke company like Bank of America? Um, It must have a 100 rating, right? Well, no. Uh, It is at 75 and has been stuck there for three years now due to criteria number four of the Corporate Equality Index. Uh, And that is responsible citizenship. As it says here, quote, employers will have 25 points deducted from their score for a large-scale official or public anti-LGBTQ blemish on their recent records. That translates to don't do anything to piss off the human rights campaign. So what exactly did Bank of America do? Uh, This video has already gone on about as long as it should, so I'm going to provide some links in the description below that you can read if uh, if you want. One link will be uh, to an interview I did with a former co-worker by the name of Justin Danhoff, who runs the Free Enterprise Project at the National Center for Public Policy Research, one of the few conservative organizations fighting in this arena of corporate activism. He explains what happened in the, uh, the Bank of America case, 
and also talks about how the left is all over corporate activism while few groups on the political right actually engage in it. For example, the National Rifle Association doesn't rate companies on how they do on Second Amendment issues, which is, you know, myopic to, uh, to say the least. Anyway, uh, I'd highly recommend that interview to, interview to you. Um, the link is in the description below. And the final thought here is going back to the question, will you see some woke advertisements during the Super Bowl this year? Well, uh, certainly you're going to see more of these ads for, you know, the, in the coming years when it's not the Super Bowl. But the Super Bowl, well, if I had to bet the rent money, uh, I'd definitely put my money on, yes, uh, we will. And in fact, I would suspect it's going to be more than just one or two advertisements. So uh, get ready for, uh, for uh, you know, plenty of LGBTQ, LMNOP propaganda in between the actual uh, football on Sunday. Alrighty, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day. Two snaps and, and your back, back feeling amazing. <laughs>